Hello, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Heart to Heart. Today, I am pleased to introduce you to Clinton Johnson, who is my featured heart-centered business for the November Opal Rising magazine. Clinton is a gifted hypnotherapist, healer, and a metaphysics, let me get that straight, metaphysics meditation expert. He is the owner of Eternal Health Services in Edmonton, Alberta, and I would also like to add that he is a writer for the Opal Rising magazine. Hello, Clinton. How are you today? I'm excellent, and how are you, Cindy? I'm just great. So um, we're going to talk about you today and um, Eternal Health Services. And so first of all, what inspired you to actually create Eternal Health Services? Like, how did that come about? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it's chain of events was first I just became obsessed with studying metaphysics. Um, I used to add really bad depression when I was younger. And uh, to me, it was a novel thought to think, maybe there's a way out of this, right? Of course, I didn't realize there's a whole field of study um, mm -hmm. of self-empowerment. So I went on a quest of really just studying metaphysics. Um, and that became an obsession and a passion. And I took all these courses and did all this work. And I was working at the supplement store at the time. And basically, they just said, hey, we're we're selling our, our, our business. You need to get a new job. And oh. I was just like, I was just like, I guess I'll start my own business. And it was, it was a really, just a divinely inspired thing where I, I feel like there was no other choice. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like it in a way chose me and I was yeah. young. I was 21 years old when I started my business. Right. Really? And I, yeah. And I, and I had no money. I, the owners of the business gave me a thousand dollars as like a bonus. Cause I, I uh, worked for them for over a year. I was like, mm -hmm. great, now I have $1,012. Um, <laughs> and, and I just started the business on that, which wasn't even a enough for one month to, to yeah. last one month. And I, I just, I don't know why, but I felt so inspired divinely to be like, why wouldn't it go well? That's kind of mm -hmm. where, I, where I was. So that's a, that's a very, very, very short version of uh, what inspired me to do it was there really wasn't, there's really nothing else to do when, uh -huh. you, when you do feel truly inspired, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So when you say supplements, is it kind of like a health food store? Yeah, it was a health food store. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, it was a great job because I sat there all day uh -huh. doing courses on the computer and I would just pause it when people would come in, I would read and I would do whatever I wanted. So it was a really good, I was getting, I was able to take courses and pay for them because mm -hmm. I was getting paid to be, well, I was at work, of course, working, but I was being paid while I was doing the course so I could afford afford to do that um so it was a really great place for me to build build myself up and i was there 11 hours a day just studying all day and wow. then i go home and i meditate all day all, all night and it was mm -hmm. it was a really great way to just sequence into that and i, I kind of thought i like this but i would like to have no boss so then yeah. the opportunity presented myself presented itself to to do that so how did how did um working in um, health food supplements turn into um, your like hypnotherapy and, you know, the metaphysical meditation expert. How did that kind of, how did it turn into eternal health services from supplements? Well, I guess I had an interest in just health and fitness. I was bodybuilding at the time and I was, uh, I guess you could say I was an athlete to some degree. And um, I kind of had um, the interest in different things. You know, I was meditating a lot and getting all interested in all these things and then the hypnotherapy is what brought it all kind of together and sequenced into that and it's kind of a funny little story here where i was working with my mentor studying under my mentor larry wayne um mm -hmm. i don't know if you know him he was no. the preeminent uh healer hypnotherapist for like 30 years around calgary uh, he, he was all around alberta too he would talk courses at uh, uh like grand mac and old anyways so studying under him and i was sitting there one day thinking okay i got all these interests and i actually started my business before i had it all put together as well oh, which is uh -huh. another kind of weird weird thing i was like i was just kind of like a health guy i was like i'll get you to meditate and take your supplements and make you good i didn't even know what i was doing <laughs> uh, funny enough um, and so i'm sitting there like one how do i pull this all together and i get a call from larry and he says um all right, you don't have to say yes, you don't have to say no, but I've been getting this insight that has been bugging me and pestering me. I have to get it off my chest. So, okay, what, what's up? He said, uh, are you interested in, in hypnotherapy? And I said, actually, I've been thinking about it the past like a day or two. I didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. He said, well, did you know I did it for 30 years? I said, no. 
He's like, you should let me teach you. And so I just started training up with him. He started, I took an apprenticeship under him. So that was the way that I merged everything kind of together. That That's mm-hmm. a, that's how it went from a supplement store all the way to, to being hypnotherapist because it's, it's, they're in the health field, but that, that is quite a leap. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, again, things just kept happening where I was like, this is the thing to do. Why? Why not? Right. So mm-hmm. that's just, that's how it sequenced into that. That's how it became that. That is so cool. Mm-hmm. So now with hypnotherapy, and I know um, like you do a whole bunch of other things as well, but with the hypnotherapy, like what, what kind of therapy do you offer? Mm-hmm. In, so in hypnotherapy. hypnotherapy? Really, it's working with the subconscious mind. So most people know about it as as reprogramming, as because um, the old fashioned way to do it is to uh, take the person under. You know, you got these yeah. you got, uh, different suggestion suggestions kind of type of therapies, but and you're stopping them from quitting smoking or whatever. But the right. way I use it is really a lot more advanced than that, and I'm using it primarily on anxiety, depression, addictions, and personal growth, spiritual growth. So it's really working with mm-hmm. the subconscious. So once I figured out the basics um i've really evolved it since and realized okay you can you can use it for trauma healing you can use it to reprogram all your belief systems because all all your behavior and all your emotions come from your belief systems Mm -hmm. so it's really just working with that subconscious level that's underneath the surface that's why people are so interested in it as they go i want to succeed but i just don't or i want to be happy or i want to do this and that i just don't and it's because there's a link where you're Conscious mind is your intellectual personality, and your subconscious mind is actually linked to your uh, emotional personality. So those need to be brought together. So it's it's really bringing that together, bringing awareness to it, and that's the nice thing. Is my job? It's it, I can be confident on my end. I just have to bring the person into their subconscious, which will give you all the data that you need. All the it'll it'll give you all the data that you need to to make those changes. Um, so really, it's it's healing the subconscious mind is what it is. There's di- again like there's different ways to do it or different. Uh, focuses people will have but in general that's that's what it is oh wow what about okay i'm going to throw a, a really weird question in here but do you do have you ever encountered past life regression yeah i, I do past really? life but, okay like, yeah yeah it's part of like i wanted to learn how to do it every possible way so, yeah. so i do past life sometime it's not like my main um focus because it tends not to be the most congruent with Pra- like practical uh healing like practical issues that you that you have um, yeah, they're normally I see that yeah they're normally more for for uh scholarly interests. spiritual seekers are very interested in that mm-hmm. uh, there's themes like because your past lives can influence you but they can't yes. uh, directly impact you in any way mm-hmm. uh they're, they're influences so by understanding an influence that can really help some people figure out what they're supposed to be doing here in, in this life or they want to be learning mostly um right. but my practice has some people that's all they do some hypnotherapists that's all they do past life for for breakfast lunch and dinner that's all that they they yeah. do um i just do them occasionally uh, because i find current current day regressions where you're regressing mm-hmm. into different traumas that you have now are normally more useful for exactly what you're going through. And my clientele, because of my history, are are people who are really suffering from, from that depression or anxiety, you know, everyday people. Um, mm-hmm. but everyday people aren't that interested in, in oh, I was this so-and-so <laughs> in my whatever in the 1800s. Oh, I was born, I was on a different planet in my last 10 lifetimes ago. That's pretty cool. Like, everyday people aren't that interested in that so so um i have been attracted to that a lot but it's fascinating i, I do enjoy doing it. it's a pretty it's a pretty cool aspect and just just to mm-hmm. uh expand on what you're what you're asking one time i was training uh my one of my apprentices and somehow uh she took me kind of by accident into a future life regression i didn't even know that was possible so that was wow. done i saw my future life yeah so that was wow. pretty wild and it makes sense you'd have access to it all with, with time well, being yeah. simultaneous. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so that was kind of an accident, uh, but it was it was pretty profound. Wow. Oh, I, I've got to hear about that sometime. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so now you do other things as well. So I've got my list here. So you also do um, metaphysical counseling, spiritual healing, um, nutrition, nutritional and fitness coaching, and let me see and organic supplements mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. let's touch on the spiritual healing so can you just explain a little bit more about what you mean by spiritual healing what is that 
Sure. So spiritual healing is actually a method of of healing. So most people think it's oh that means you're healing my spirit, but it's actually a method of healing where you're where you're it's a it's a type of uh, channeling, I suppose, type of mediumship where you're channeling actual spirit entities. So they're called spirit doctors. That's just their occupation. Oh, um, yeah. And so basically you just you just become a medium for them, you just become an instrument for them, and they work through you, they run energy through you. So it's it's the highest level of healing um that humans are capable of. And some people are absolutely amazing, um, like Harry Edwards and, and Jesus Christ, or those kind of the mm -hmm. the two top any healer knows like those two names, right? Yeah. Um, right. Where they were to, like Harry Edwards was uh I don't know when he passed away, uh like nineteen hundreds, and he was doing like over 10,000 healings a month, like uh, people, he had like buckets of, uh, of letters being written to him and he had people lined up out the door because he could mm -hmm. just get such good results. Um, so really, yeah, that's your channeling. You're, you're, you're basically attuning <clears throat> to, to a spirit doctor. So you can do that hands-on, like to hands-on okay. ailment. But the, the main way that I do it is I just do it during my sessions. People don't even necessarily know about it. But I'm basically, mm -hmm. you basically attune to them and you give them data. You go, okay, this person's struggling with this or that, uh, this this ailment. Because it's really in your head that you need to uh, place the hands, need to be placed upon you. It's really uh -huh. more for the client to feel like you're doing something. But you okay. can do it from any distance or you can do it from, so certainly you can do it from any distance on the planet. Certainly I can do it if they're two mm -hmm. feet away from me while I'm taking right. them through a meditation. So that's the main way I incorporate it personally is I I uh, give the data to my to my spirit doctors. There's two of them, and then I just say this person's doing this, and, that, and I and I hold that attunement. And they also feed information to me, so I always know what to say in my when I'm taking. Because again, hypnotherapy is primarily guided meditations. That's how you work with the subconscious. So I always know what to say. I can see in my mind's eye what to tell them to see, and I know what to say. So it's custom built for them. So they relay information back to me as well. So they they're basically teammates with you. So I have a pattern of saying like us or we like oh yeah we can help you and then i'm like oh wait this person doesn't need to know that it's <laughs> not just me and yeah. I'm, I'm not here to impose anything or creep people out some people find that interesting and some people i would never ever mention it but that's yeah. a little bit of, that's a little bit of, of, about it yeah so i'm just gonna regress a little bit um when did you know that you had this this um this gift this this power this skill to to do this kind of healing so uh, my mentor pointed it out i was pretty much when i was working with him i was like yeah. no i'm doing this for me i'm not gonna help anybody i'm just doing it for me i didn't even want to he's like no you got it that's how you use it that's the, you, you got to help people i was like all right fine um so he just kind of said that um he noticed that i would probably be good or have that capacity i have a mm -hmm. I have a great, I have a pretty good capacity of proclivity towards, towards love. I really don't, don't run out of compassion. I it pretty much, um, even amongst people in our field, it's, it's pretty, it seems pretty high. Um, and that's what you need to unlock it because anyone can heal. If you really, really like want your daughter or wife or something to, to, to be get better, you could, you could heal them. So to do that at a professional level, you need to be able to do that to people you've never met before. Right. right? Uh, right and just be like you you're weird you have to love to, <laughs> and, uh, to desire the best for them so i have that proclivity i have that capacity and my mentor just said why don't you try it out gave me some techniques gave me a uh, actually it's pretty cool i, I read harry, harry edwards tech uh, basically his book where if you listen to most healers talk they're not yeah. really sure they're like i have this connection i have a gift i place my yeah. hand and i envision a white light and that's how it works. But somehow Harry Edwards wrote a 400 plus t page textbook on it. Um, so I read that and uh, got the understanding of it. I just started practicing and it started working. So wow. yeah, I was just kind of directed into it and put that as part of my um, part of my repertoire that, mm -hmm. I, that I have. So that, that's a little bit about how, how that happened. So I also read um, um, too that you do a little bit of work on animals too, people's pets. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that more. Wow. Um, nowadays, I don't let them into. I have a really nice office now. I don't let them into it, but uh, <laughs> I do because the thing about animals is they're extremely receptive, right? Yeah. They can't. Where humans can block it out. They no yeah. matter how much you, no matter how powerful you are, you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. Um, yeah. But animals, they'll they'll let it in. There are still factors that might make it impossible to heal them. Um, mm -hmm. but animals are more receptive to healing. So I really like doing that, but I'll, I'll do it any chance I have if I'm over at somebody's house and the, to their pet, if pet seems ill or whatever, I'll just run energy on them or whatever. And, uh, 
um yeah so i like doing that too it's pretty fun that is so cool okay so now you also do nutritional and fitness fitness um coaching as well so mm -hmm. um what's involved in that so that's where I really got my start, right? But I've moved away from it for the most part. I do it occasionally, especially for people that I know. I used to do it like full time, and now mm -hmm. I do it. Now I don't do it as often. I'm starting to move away from that. But it's it's pretty it's interesting. So basically, you're I'm introducing principles where uh, nutrition principles where people can then apply whatever uh, kind of ideology that they want. Some people are, of course, vegans or meat eaters or whatever. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't make them do whatever i just go here are the principles that you need to know here's a bit about how, about how the body works um mm -hmm. in, in relationship with food and then fit in what your ideology is what you think is is right for you because there's ways to fit it all in yeah. so that's kind of the, kind of the main thing is you're helping people upgrade that through different principles mm -hmm. um that are applicable for everybody so it's a really it's a really good system i learned that at the body mind institute in calgary it's a, it's a really amazing system it's probably the best one out there um and you can do this system without even knowing every little thing about nutrition, which which I liked, because um, because it, it, these principles are are universal, right? So that mm -hmm. that's about a little bit about that. And then I'll introduce like with my background in in sports, I play college basketball and bodybuilder, like I said. So I can introduce some sort of fitness routine with them that that works for them. So that's a little bit about what I do there. So interesting. All right. So I have one last question for you. Okay. What is your vision for the future? um for for your business and and you personally you know what is your vision for the future mm -hmm. yeah well i got a couple ideas i'm training i got one apprentice i'm training a second apprentice right now and i want to expand with them i'd like to get my uh buy my own like full clinic and have different uh, apprentices working there uh, apprentices remotely i am starting my own podcast soon i got to finish my book i'm working on a book for quite a while i want to publish that book um and really basically um continue doing the work that i that i do but also to do it a little bit less to be there for my family more is actually part of my vision as well yeah. um so having these creative outlets so um, i'm expanding it uh base, basically in that way and we'll see what comes from it i'm interested in doing some workshops or some speeches and and things like that i mean i love nothing really beats working one-on-one -on -one with the client and doing that custom custom healing custom meditation for them but i'm interested in in expanding a little bit and uh, and giving a lot uh, building up a platform and a clientele where i can i can channel them off to my to my apprentices and they can mm -hmm. they can have their turn um because even though i'm young i've been doing doing this a long time so i'm ready to i'm just yeah. upgrading everything basically yeah excellent excellent well thank you so much uh clinton for joining me here today and for all of our listeners out there um i also want to invite you back for for additional um information you know like um i wanted to mention too that um some of the articles that you write are really in depth. And I think they're very helpful. And um, let's talk about, you know, uh, particular articles sometime. But at the end of the show, I will have all of your links where everybody can get a hold of you if they if they so choose to get in contact with you. And um, thank you so much again for joining me here. And goodbye, everybody.